It's a story that's all too familiar these days. Trey Young absolutely went off in game one. Hawks got the W, took an early lead in the series. Now, despite that, they're still eight-point underdogs in game two. So, Kenny, can Young and the Hawks do it again? Or do the Bucks figure out how to contain Trey Young, who accounted for over 50% of the Hawks' offensive output? I mean... Why not? Why not? Yeah, I think they can. I mean, look, I'm so out on the Bucks right now. I'm so, I'm so annoyed. I'm so, I can't watch the Bucks anymore. Like, how can you watch the Bucks and and just like have a good time? Mike Budenholzer ruins it. Look, this defense has been good all postseason long. Besides, like one incredible scoring explosion from the Brooklyn Nets, this team's defensive rating has stabilized. It's been very, very good. It was good again in game in game one. The problem is they don't know how to score the basketball. They have such an unimaginative offense. They run, they have three plays. They have a pick and roll with Giannis where they throw the alley-oop and they did it like five times down the stretch. And then they'll have the, the Giannis isolation where Giannis does the Giannis play, hits a spin move and an one layup. And then Chris Middleton will bring the ball up and then just like stop, turn around and try to hit a fadeaway jumper. Like that's their whole offense. And when like when Chris Middleton inevitably misses some of those shots, when Giannis gets double teamed, there's no sort of semblance of another plan here for this team. And they just have, it's, it's been like 15 games or whatever this postseason, And it hasn't mattered. Like they, maybe it's like 12. They just, they just continue to do the same thing. And why are we going to expect all of a sudden the Hawks to, or the Fox to adjust here to what the Hawks were doing? Look, I just think that the Hawks have done enough on the offensive end that they don't even, they don't even really need to do anything differently. The Bucks are just going to shoot themselves in the foot again here. And yeah, I, I think that the, the, the Hawks cover this spread. All right, what are you thinking here, Jules? Yeah, eight's a lot. And just as a basketball fan, I mean, the Hawks are the much easier team to, number one, root for, uh, number two, to back based on just, you know, like Kenny said, the, the Bucks aren't doing anything right. The Hawks are, you know, making adjustments, playing the right way on both ends of the floor, um, doing all the right things. Now, I, we'll probably get some Trey Young regression just naturally, even if the Bucks don't adjust. I don't know if he can necessarily play quite that well again. That was kind of maxing out. Um, and Chris Middleton probably is due to hit some more shots, but Drew Holiday also went off, and that could level off a little bit. Like, it just kind of feels like too many points for a Hawks team that we just keep overlooking. Like, the Hawks have have my brain in a pretzel at this point um i've gone against them plenty i don't i don't know are they this good or are they just benefiting from going against all-time poor coaching the doc rivers collapses the milwaukee collapses like it's probably a little bit of both you got to give them credit for taking advantage of the poor coaching and, and going out there and being able to do it but like it just makes it difficult i honestly the one thing that i do trust the bucks do come out of the gates hot generally at home coming off a loss. Like I'm probably going to bet Milwaukee minus three on the first quarter line and say that they're going to come out, you know, with some juice in this game. And if they wind up covering that, you can probably get Atlanta now with double digits, like plus 10 or so after the first quarter, which I'm fine with. They always come back. 